All right, what is going on fellow gamers? How we doing today? I'm your host Cody and welcome back to another video from Pro Guides. Lately in Fortnite, with the lack of major competitive events, the giant uncertainty regarding what's coming next for competitive, most players have been sticking to creative in order to keep their skills sharp and strengthen their mechanics during this sort of downtime. And almost everyone loves to do build battles in creative, am I right? Or am I right? I'm right. That's why in today's video, we're going to be analyzing some gameplay from a few of the most insane build fights, including some wagers as well, and seeing just what they do to consistently dominate in their build fights, and see how you can use their strategies to win even more build fights against some of the best players. But real quick, before we get started, I've got a question for you. Are you looking to get better at Fortnite? If you are, make your way over to ProGuides.com where we have exclusive courses for our pro members made by pros like Mongrel and Benji, along with meta articles and videos to keep you updated on the meta. On top of all this, we also offer 24-7 on-demand coaching from some of the world's top players. If any of this amazing stuff interests you, you've got to check out ProGuides.com. Last thing before we get into this amazing video, let's do today's question of the day. Ooh, my favorite time of the day. Today's question is, who do you think is the best builder in Fortnite? I'm waiting, I'm waiting. If you said Bob, I mean, you'd be kind of right. But personally, I think Booga is the best overall builder since he's not only got good speed, but his moves are always so calculated and smart. But Parallel Psycho easily takes the cake in terms of pure speed. That dude is pretty ridiculous. Let me know in the comments what you think. I'm really curious to hear who you all think the best builder is. But anyway, without further ado, let's start off the video by looking at a super underrated wagerer who goes by the name Plalism. I've actually been personally watching Plalism streams for a while, and boy, can I tell you, he is absolutely insane. To start off, he consistently goes like 200 and 0 in build fights, only losing to a few of the world's top pros, and you can argue that they even got lucky beating him, but you know, take that to the peanut gallery, I'm not saying anything. Also, these build fights aren't your basic build fights with friends either. These are actually wagers where there's real money on the line. That is just insane. Anyway, let's start by looking at one of his build fights against another wager player and see how he manages to come out with the win. First off, let's take a look at Plalism's 1v1 start. He does 690s to the right with the ramp and cone coming off his second 90 and his fourth 90 is performed without jumping. Let's take a look at why this is so good. This is art. First off, after the first two 90s, when he places the rampant cone, the goal is to block off any opponent who does two basic 90s, as they won't be able to place a ramp on the cone and they may be confused by it. After that, the no jump 90 is performed to maintain momentum without jump fatigue having any impact. Overall, this start is one of the best you can do and will give you height almost every time. Now that he's holding high ground, Plalism immediately begins to put pressure on his opponent. Under pressure! By simply spraying his AR and tracking his opponent through builds to find the optimal area to shoot at. He sees his opponent trying to break him down with the classic spam floors and cones to break down trick that players use. But he already has the floor and ramp above the player, so he edits down for a quick 70 damage. Not much can be said about this apart from the importance of knowing where your opponent is and how you can take advantage of their position. From here, he continues to hold this high ground position, which is absolutely crucial, and quickly edits down when he hears his opponent running away. If you hear your opponent going away from you, that essentially means their head is turned, making them completely vulnerable from the back. Knowing this and having done it hundreds of times, he quickly makes the edit and scores another clean shot. Just with these two shots, the opponent is almost completely done for. Dude is under pressure. Now, Plalism sort of tries to flex on this opponent, but unfortunately falls. Not to worry, as he's quickly able to crank up, Instead of pushing for high ground like a psycho and risking getting shot, he stays on low ground and waits for his opponent to make himself vulnerable. One great trait creative gods have is that they tend to wait for their opponent to make mistakes, especially in wagers where people often choke under the pressure and make a lot of mistakes that can be capitalized on. The player ends up phasing through this cone and the fight is ultimately ended with a quick pump shot to the body. I bet he was making a face when he got shot in the body. But well, let's just look at the second fight from the same wager and see how he cleans up the kill super fast. After doing his signature 1v1 start and getting high ground, Plalism holds onto his high ground and goes for some AR shots. Honestly, if you're able to tag your opponent early in the fight, even for 30 or 60, that can determine the fight right there. 
From here, Plawlism knows that he has a great health advantage, so he moves down to the opponent's lair and predicts his edit. He sees a floor and a cone and knows the opponent is running into it, so the only realistic answer is a double edit. Knowing this, he simply waits at the top, scoring a quick pump shot and a few AR shots to end this fight. Plawlism is one of the most insane controller players for sure, but next up, we'll be looking at another wager player who's best known for his insanely fast, flashy mechanics on mouse and keyboard, essentially all the opposite of Plawlism, and see what we can take away from both of these playstyles. The mouse and keyboard player I am talking about is Outcast Physics. Physics has blown up onto the wager scene as one of the fastest, most flashy builders in the game. He also has an insane wager record, hardly ever losing, against even some of the best players around. Let's watch a wager from him and see what he does different to succeed in his own playstyle. Like we did for my boy Plowlism, let's take a look at Physics' start. His start is usually relatively similar, both having 690s and utilizing cones. However, during this 1v1, he does a relatively simple double 90 with a bizzle jump. It's not the craziest or fanciest, but it definitely gets the job done and can grab height on most players. Let's look at this 90 pattern he does because this is absolutely incredible! It is important to see what techniques physics uses to retake high ground as they're some of the most insanely underrated and underused techniques that can score you height at an insane amount. He starts off by doing a protected 90, building all the walls on the side of his opponent, builds two ramps out toward the opponent as well, with another ramp on the side to block any angle changes. From here, he does another 90 towards the opponent, building two ramps and two cones, with another 90 after that. Finally, he finishes the technique with a Thwiffo cone to cover his head, just as a precaution, and edits out, following it up with a few other retakes to continue his push for height. This technique is absolutely amazing when your opponent is one or two layers above and you want to push for high ground, as it not only gets you up higher faster by incorporating 90s, but also has a ton of cover and opportunities to block off your opponent, being the insane amount of ramps and cones around the 90s. Overall, this technique is absolutely insane and is definitely one you should practice if you're looking to be a bit more advanced. The second technique you need to see is his signature side jump retake. He starts by throwing up a Thwiffo cone and builds a ramp facing the side. Opponents usually expect you to continue Thwiffo coning in the same direction, so this can often throw them off quite a bit. From here, he builds a wall up on top of the cone to cover his side jump and jumps off to the side, catches himself with a floor and ramp, and continues to 90 up from there. This is a simple yet super effective way to push for height and almost nobody expects it. This wager ends up being really long, so let's cut to the chase. Physics ends up getting his high ground back, not super surprising, and look at this shot that springs him into winning the fight. He sees the opponent cone himself and expects a side jump, just knowing player tendencies and experiences from his past wagers. Predicting this side jump, he scores a beautiful shot on his opponent. From here, he falls behind his opponent, now knowing his weakness of not covering his side jumps fully, and hits a beautiful 105 damage shot from behind. Knock knock, I'm here. Ah! At this point, Physics knows he's got this wager in the bag with one more shot. From this point, with his opponent panicking on low health and the high ground advantage, Physics cleans up the kill easily with another pump shot. Now that we've gone over some fights from both Plawlism and Physics, let's do a recap and organize this into something we can all understand. Kapish, kapash, we're getting it together right here. First of all, both of these players are absolutely insane at the game and their unique playstyles allow them to have different strengths and also different weaknesses. Plawlism has his insane controller aim, along with great prediction skills and the ability to hold height. Physics, on the other hand, has insanely fast mechanics and uses his ridiculously fast retakes and builds to gain and hold height, and abuses his opponent's mistakes once he makes his way onto height. As for which playstyle is better, neither one is better. However, one thing that is better is having good aspects of both playstyles and merging them together. Trying to get these good aspects of each player's style is a great way to be a well-rounded and generally good creative player. Let's recap some of these tips from the video so you have a better idea of what you actually have to do. To start, let's look at some tips from Plawlism's wagers. First of all, high ground is everything. This is made extremely clear by the fact that he wins almost every single time he has high ground and rarely accepts the low ground. 
seconds, getting chip shots early in the fight can be a giant game changer. And these shots can easily be the difference between winning and losing. Even 30 or 60 damage can easily send a fight in your favor. We got favor, we got flavor, we got favor flavor, y'all. A win sounds pretty tasty. Third, tracking your opponent and knowing where they are along with what they're doing is absolutely crucial. And you can look for angles and shots that you wouldn't have otherwise had if you get really good at this. Fourth, it is crucial to know multiple 1v1 starts. So if your opponent figures out how to counter one start you use, you always have a backup plan. It is important to never settle for low ground off start if you have the choice. And the ability to stay off low ground starts at your 1v1 start. All right, let's keep the show moving. Next, let's look at a few tips from physics gameplay. First off, physics has this insane ability to pull off some of the most effective high ground retakes with ease. Practicing his two heavily used retakes, the protected 90 retake and his signature side jump retake will help you push for high ground if you're ever in the situation where you lose it. Second, knowing how to predict your opponent's next move is an amazing ability and we can see how much it helps physics in his wager as he's able to score tons of damage simply by knowing his opponent's plan. You're an evil mastermind. How do you know my plans? These plans were top secret. Finally, it is absolutely crucial to analyze your opponent's movements and figure out where they're vulnerable so you can take advantage of it. We see in Physics Wager how he notices his opponent's lack of cover during his side jumps, and Physics ultimately wins this wager with ease once he realizes and starts to take advantage of this. Overall, both of these players are absolutely insane, and they show us some differing playstyles, each with their own benefits and downfalls. It's great to understand and practice each playstyle, and then develop your own playstyle by seeing what works and what doesn't for you. And to add to that, perfect practice makes perfect, okay? If you're just out there and you're just doing your thing, you're practicing, you probably will not get perfect. But if you are in there and consciously trying to do your best, trying to clean up all your areas of mechanics, then bro, you will succeed, okay? These players learned their moves, figured out their strategies and play styles, and ultimately just got this good at 1v1s through tons and tons of practice. We talking about practice. Hundreds, maybe even thousands of hours worth of wagers and 1v1 fights. As Plalism says in this decadent tweet, Three months ago, I was losing to people I beat 5-0 now. It is insane how much can change with a bit of practice. Keep up the grind. Remember that Rome was not built in a day, and it'll take a ton of rigorous practice to get to a high level in this game. It is a grind, but I believe in you, and I know you can do it. Just keep practicing and improving, play as often as you're able to, and you will see yourself improving at insane rates. Thank you all so much for watching this video. We really hope it helped you out. Go into your next 1v1 build fight super confident, knowing that you've got some of the best tricks from some of the world's best 1v1ers that you can use to give yourself an edge and continue to improve fast in the future. If you enjoyed the video, we'd appreciate it a bunch if you could drop a like, subscribe, and maybe even share the video with a few friends as well. Jimmy down the street has been pretty trash recently, so probably share him a video. But just because Jimmy's been pretty trash recently doesn't mean he will forever be trash. You know, he could probably be pro in the future if he practices. So Jimmy, watch these pro guys videos and get on your game, bro. Let's get these W's, man. Remember to tell us in the comments what you'd like to see next on the channel. We read all your comments and we'll consider every idea. Also, be sure to check out ProGuides.com for some more amazing exclusive content that you will not find anywhere else. Once again, it's been your host, Cody. You can follow me on Instagram at CocoMeddler. Are you loco for the Coco? Let me know. Oh yeah, guys, also YOLO, okay? You only got one life. So just go out there and do it. Whatever you want to get done, I promise you, if you try and try and try again, you will eventually get it, okay? So let's get it, bro. That's what I'm talking about, man. All right, guys, so stay positive, stay up. And lastly, don't let them know your plans. No, not my top secret plans. My plans have been breached and my breaches have been soiled. Oh, I'll see you guys later. Peace.